All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, we are back with Dr. William Lee. Uh, he has joined us for a couple videos now. This is video three. Uh, and what we really wanna do in this video is get to some very simple, practical advice. Uh, we've talked a lot about science and a lot about uh, the work that he's been doing, but I'd really just like to hear from him on some specific recommendations. If you have cancer, uh, where to start as it relates to food. So Dr. Lee, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jameson. Listen, one of the reasons that I went into food as medicine research was because all of the patients that I had who I had diagnosed with cancer always had that question, hey doc, what, I, what should I be eating? Like they would they ask me, how bad is it? What treatment do I need to take? How long do I have? And then the final question, and what should I eat? What should I eat? <laughs> yeah. Uh, almost every single one. And, and I realized I probably had a reasonable answer I could give to almost every single one of those questions, except for the nutrition one. Because I, like many doctors, had, you know, probably a week's worth of nutrition during my entire medical education. Sure. And uh, so I felt that was wrong. And I went back into, you know, the lab and the clinic to try to figure out the answer. So let me just kind of synthesize uh, some of the foods that I want people to think about. Okay. Perfect. And by the way, I want to preface this by saying I'm not giving medical advice. Um, you really need to be able. There's no magic cure. There's no food that can cure cancer, um, and and you have to really work with your oncologist and everybody's body responds differently. But I will tell you what the research shows um, uh, that that's really worth considering because it's so practical. Uh, number one, I think that uh, you should uh, consider drinking green tea. Green tea have has catechins, natural polyphenols that have been shown in virtually every single research study that's ever been done. Can actually lower inflammation, boost your immunity, cut off the blood supply of feeding cancers, and actually help cancer patients also be a little bit more relaxed uh, because it also lowers anxiety and lowers blood pressure. And green tea yeah. is just one of those beverages that um, I think that is um, a winner from almost any angle you can look at. Uh, and if you can't um, have caffeine with it, here's something practical. You can get decaffeinated uh, uh, green tea, but oh, make sure it's decaffeinated with water decaffeination mm. process, not the solvent uh, version. Yeah. Uh, so there are companies that actually tell you that they, they probably tell you that they remove the caffeine using a water process. So that'd be one, one of the, one of the five. I would say uh, another one that people should consider are dark leafy greens. Now it sounds mm. like it might be trite to say that, but I can tell you that there are, chemicals that have been identified called sulforaphanes and isothiocyanates that are present in chicory, in broccoli, in broccoli sprouts, in kale, radicchio, you know, and lots of these and anthocyanins. There's lots of these natural chemicals. And in the lab and in the clinic, they actually all have been all been shown to be associated with being able to help fight cancer. Hmm. On top of that, many of these leafy greens have a lot of fiber. And we talked in a past video about dietary fiber feeding your gut microbiome, which then lowers your inflammation, your bi gut microbiome, the bacteria talks to your immune system, which then helps you fight cancer. There's nothing wrong with that. And in today's kind of Google video world, uh, YouTube world, if there's a green that you didn't like because the way your mom cooked it wasn't so great, go ahead and type in that that dark leafy green, dinosaur kale, you know, radicchio, bok choy, mm -hmm. and search recipe um, and video, and you'll watch somebody like the food channel tell you an amazingly delicious way to make it that can be done in 20 minutes or less kind of thing so that's the second one tea and vegetables third one now now, now quick question about yep. about the leafy greens um and maybe other other ones on your list how how important is it in your mind for things to be purchased organic and or local uh, and how where do you kind of rate that for yourself yeah so look eating whole foods, plant-based foods, like leafy greens, it's, if you can get them, eat them. Okay. Don't, you know, like you, you want to, you, you don't want to kind of say, well, I can't get organic. Okay. Um, so having them is what's the most important thing. Got now it. you want to take it to the next level. I can actually talk about that. So I used to be a big skeptic about organic. Mm. Okay. Uh, and the reason is I kind of resented the idea that I have to pay more money to get something with less bad stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah. It just sounded, that seemed wrong to me. Yeah. Um, but 
I, I changed my mind about three years ago, just before the pandemic. Mm. Um, I learned from a bunch of horticulturalists, people that study plants, that in fact, many of the bioactives that are anti-angiogenic, immune boosting, uh, good for the gut microbiome, they're actually produced by the plant for the plant's own defenses, specifically mm. as natural insecticides, natural pest control. So a great example of this is in strawberries. The what, you know, strawberries are sweet and tart, right? And, and the mm -hmm. tart part of a strawberry comes from something called elagic acid. Mm -hmm. Elagic acid is naturally made by the strawberry plant in, uh, as, a, as a natural insecticide, natural pesticide. So when bugs nibble on the strawberries, leaves, and, 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 uh, uh, and, and uh, stems, the strawberry uh, plant feels that as an injury Got to get rid of those bugs so it makes more logic acid to repel mm -hmm. those bugs and loads it up in the fruit okay got it yep. so when you buy a organic plant you actually get well what happens is that so in conventionally grown with pesticides you have fewer bugs around right so the plant looks nicer fewer bugs less injury less mm -hmm. bioactive doesn't mm -hmm. mean there's no bioactive but it's much less compared to um uh the strawberry I can tell you another example is in coffee beans. Organically grown coffee beans have something called chlorogenic acid, which helps to repel insects as well. Hmm. An organic coffee bean has three times as much chlorogenic acid as wow. one conventional. That's interesting. Sure. Now I have a different point of view because I might be willing to pay a little bit more to get a little bit more good stuff. Yep. Yep. So, so not just get the absence of bad stuff, but you're actually getting more good stuff. Exactly. That's, that's helpful. Yeah. Thank you for, for answering that. Right. Well, so we talked about tea. We talked about leafy greens, mm -hmm. berries. And we started talking mm -hmm. about berries have this elagic acid and anthocyanins, dark berries like blueberries, blackberries, um, uh, and even strawberries. You know, anthocyanin is a kind of a reddish, purplish, natural dye that is mm -hmm. anti-androgenic, immune-boosting activity. Uh, and, and eating berries actually is really helpful for your health defenses. So that's a third food that's really practical. By the yep. way, if you have berries, do please don't put tons of sugar on them. Let Mother Nature's <laughs> sugar, you know, most sure. berries are not that sweet, but you don't want to like, you know, sort of kill the goose that lays the golden egg kind of thing. With sure. added sugar. Um, uh, so that's the third thing I would actually suggest. And then tree nuts. Now, in a past video, we mm -hmm. talked about the evidence that uh, tree nuts actually um, can be good for um, in a study looking at stage three colon cancer, yeah. which is published in the Journal of Clinical Oncology. But I can tell you that other studies have similarly found that tree nuts can have tremendous benefits for um, the gut microbiome, which then helps your immune system fight cancer. Uh, so uh, uh, it's a, nuts are, uh, what, what I love about nuts is that they're, they're, there's a whole bunch of different kinds of nuts, right? Yep. You might like Brazil nuts or pecans or almonds or cashews or macadamias or walnuts. You can switch it out. You're all getting the same thing. Good, healthy, natural plant-based forms of omega-3s and a ton of dietary fibers. These mm -hmm. activate your body's health defense systems in favor. And nuts are, are different than kind of like I eat a piece of salmon, you know, uh, for dinner. Um, uh, you can stack on a nut. And my mm -hmm. only uh, strong suggestion and, and kind of warning is, do not snack on nuts that have been deep fried or have right. chemical fire rings put on them. Always look at how it's been processed and how it's actually been seasoned and what's in the seasoning. Better yet, go to the bulk section of the grocery store where you can buy it cheaply anyway. Yeah. Get a bunch of different kinds, you know, the kinds you like. Um, take a metal bowl and, and go to the spice cabinet, pick out, you know, dried spices that you actually like. Mm -hmm. If you like spicy, bust out the, the 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 chili or the smoked paprika uh if you like savory uh, garlic salt you know i mean do it yourself yeah yeah, yeah. So you know exactly what's in it so that's really helpful and then the last one you know people might be um surprised by uh this comes from research i and other people have done is dark chocolate turns oh, out interesting chocolate is a confection like if you get a milky way bar or three musketeers i mean you know like halloween candy all right that's a confection it's got mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff and actually not that much real cacao. Stuff. Right. Yeah. But get a bar, which you can find in almost any grocery store now, that's 85, 80% or higher mm -hmm. chocolate cacao. Now you're talking about essentially something that's mostly plant-based 
because that's what cacao is. It gives yeah. you dietary fiber. It gives you polyphenols from the chocolate. And we've done some research that was presented at the um, uh, American Society of Nutrition's annual meeting that showed that the stuff in dark chocolate can cut off the blood supply feeding cancers. It's an anti ah. uh, And we actually tested with leukemia cells, for example, and it directly is toxic to nucle leukemia cells. It kills leukemia cells. So interesting. All kinds of things that are really interesting about food. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. You asked me to yeah. pick up. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I know there's a list of 200, uh, but I think those are all some very practical, uh, solid recommendations. So thank you. Yeah. And, and you know, the, the, you know for, for people who actually want to know more about these types of foods, I, uh, you know, I feel like I drink from a fire hydrant every single mm. week. There's so much new information that's coming out. And so what I've tried to do, especially during the pandemic, I realized that, you know, people are on their devices and reading about information that they could use when it comes to food. I've got free newsletters. I've got free master classes. You know, just have people just come to my website, Dr. William Lee, Dr. William Lee, L -I .com, mm -hmm. or look up, look for me on Instagram. Uh, Twitter, and you can actually follow. I, I put out new information all the time uh, from cutting edge research that's coming out uh, on foods that actually can help fight cancer. Yeah, I've actually, I've really appreciated your, your kind of YouTube shorts um, where you're like in the farmer's market and going, yeah, let's, let's wander over here and see what they've got. You know, and you, and you talk about it. It's, it's really uh, feels interactive and, uh, and useful. And I can tell you are deep in the the current research which i know at the tip of that iceberg of of trying to be deep into it not having a technical medical background and so i can imagine uh, how how far you go on a weekly basis exactly and i will make sure to link to everything you just referenced below so that people uh, can just click and go because there's a lot of great resources out there great well it's really a pleasure for me to talk about this because again this is the kind of information that I realized, you know, and uh, I think on the last tape we talked about video, we talked about um, why I got into this because my cancer mm -hmm. patients always ask me what I should be eating and I didn't yeah. have the answer. And so, you know, I, I'm real. I think it really important now for to be able to try to get that information out there. Your doctor might or might not be giving it to you. Mm -hmm. OK, but when it comes to drugs, you need a prescription when it comes mm -hmm. to food you do it yourself and by the way another easy tip that i do is you know if you have my book i always tell people this is the cheat take a get my book take a sharpie go straight for the tables that have all the foods just trust yep. me i've already done all the heavy lifting for you um to make sure that they're they belong on there and start circling the foods that you already love and then take your cell phone and take a picture of that page with the with your sharpie that you circle with the sharpie Next yep. time you go to the store, you're trying to figure out what you should buy, open up your photos and take a look at what you circle. And then that's kind of your yep. shop. Here's your cheat sheet. You know, you like it already. Exactly. And now you know what that's doing to support your health. Exactly. That's awesome. Great, great recommendation. All right. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Thank you.